When a well-written character comes along, it's impossible not to get attached. So today, GameRanks is bringing you 10 AI partners we absolutely fell in love with. Before we start, two things. First, we don't necessarily mean romantic love, obviously. Second off, we don't mean characters like Vladis from Portal, or Cortana from Halo, or Claptrap. These aren't really AI-controlled, still great characters, but just not what we're talking about. Number 10, Clementine from The Walking Dead Season 1. For a kid in first grade, you know, before the apocalypse, Clementine, who's affectionately called Sweet Pea by Lee, is an extraordinarily kind child who also shows quite a bit of maturity for her age. Although, let's just go ahead and say it, it's probably hard to act super childlike after everybody's, you know, turned into a monster and killed everyone. Now, just being that she's even keeled and mature doesn't mean she's not idealistic and has had to go through a lot, including what to do with Lee and seeing her parents after they turn into zombies. It's hard not to like her because she's a good kid who's been through too much. And I gotta say, making her playable in the second season was a wonderful wonderful choice. Number 9, Johnny Gat is a character that's been in a lot of the Saints Row games. So people who played the series were basically automatically endeared to him, but finding out he was alive in Saints Row 4 just kind of makes it impossible not to be happy. Johnny Gat's a weirdo. I'm not gonna say he's a normal person by any means, but then again, it's Saints Row and there you go. Johnny Gat says a lot of ridiculous and offensive things, but he says them in a way that is somehow weirdly endearing, and he starts to feel like a brother to the protagonist. For a game that makes its name on being utterly ridiculous, for some reason the kinship with Johnny Gat just seems very genuine. Number 8, Craig Boone from Fallout New Vegas. Craig comes into this list as our first sympathy candidate. Craig is kind of psychologically troubled, not just from being in the NCR military, but because a slaving party took his wife and auctioned her off with hundreds of other slaves to Legion soldiers. Now as you get to know Craig, he tells you more and more about that, and you eventually find out that when he saw her being auctioned off, he made a decision that because he had one bullet on him and his rifle, it would be better to take her life than subject her to possibly decades of slavery. Who knows how long she would have lasted, but one way or the other, that's a choice I'd ever want to make someday. If Craig dies, you can get a letter off of his body that's essentially a gut-wrenching goodbye to his wife, Carla. And you can tell this guy really cares for her, so it's not like it would really be okay for him to allow her that life. <clears throat> Moving on from the emotional stuff, there's also a spotter perk if you've got him around. Number 7, HK-47 from Knights of the Old Republic. Okay, so HK-47 is hard not to love. HK-47 has a, well, let's just say predisposition to violence. He pretty much has a disdain for life, as in organic life, and is driven by a want to cause chaos and destruction. And for some reason, there's an ironic quality to him that always makes you curious if he actually truly hates the various people and things around him. HK-47 complains a lot, and does so passive aggressively and sarcastically. He was badly damaged and repaired, according to him, not that well, and has perhaps one of the most abrasive personalities possible, yet you just can't avoid enjoying him. He's basically a banter machine and calls all humans meat bags. And after a while, it just starts to feel good when you get called that. At least by him. I think if other people called me a meat bag, I'd be kind of like, what? Why are you calling me that? He's obviously bound to follow your orders, so he doesn't go on the rampage that he so desperately desires, but still, for some reason there's just something fun about him. Number six, dog meat. You know, the dog from Fallout 1, 2, 3, and 4. Dog meat's really just not possible to not fall in love with. Obviously, dogs are nice. They don't have to be able to speak for you to know. They care. And in a post-apocalyptic world, that matters a lot. On top of being a formidable companion, dog meat usually manages to trump all of the human NPC companions in most enjoyable to have around, simply because in all of the games, he constantly does things that just make you go, Aw, I have a dog with me. And especially in Fallout 4, that where they really went out of their way to make something that was uncanny to the world. And every time they do a new dog meet, I just, I love it even more. Number 5, Alex Vance from Half-Life 2. Really felt like a character character. She felt like another person going through the same things that you were going through, as opposed to a thing that you had to drag along. Yeah, she wasn't the first, but she was very clearly the first that was put out at that scale. Her strength and her caring personality just made it really hard not to fall in love with her in more ways than one for many people, including the aliens. The aliens all loved Alex Vance. The ones on your side anyway. The other the other ones didn't, obviously. But everywhere you would go, they'd be like, Alex Vance. We really love Alex Vance here. Just non-stop talking about Alex Vance wherever he went. If Gordon Freeman were the jealous type instead of the emotionally vacant shell of a person for you to occupy type. <laughs> Number four, Garrus Vakarian from the Mass Effect series. 
series. Garrus is irresistible, period. He's just the right combination of learned, but naive in some places, confident sometimes, but then you find out it's really to cover up kind of an insecurity about him. A very weird, brash, loud sense of humor for someone who I would consider probably not like that. Garrus is kind of a mix of different things that makes him very interesting. And despite the fact that it looks like he got his face stuck in a garbage disposal, it's really hard not to look at him fondly. Number three, Ellie from The Last of Us. Ellie starts out as a very brash youth type, but gradually becomes your surrogate daughter, basically, in a trek across the entire United States to try to get her somewhere to use her immunity to the infection to create a cure for it, or at least a vaccination. Ellie's a strong character, but also very vulnerable, though obviously not physically vulnerable as she's the only one immune to all of the infection. Ellie can get fairly defensive, which we can all relate with on account when something bothers us, it's almost hard to not react that way nowadays. You never really feel like you have to babysit Ellie, which is really good because, again, these types of characters can often feel like a burden where they stay with you the entire game. In fact, the entire point of the game essentially is your relationship with Ellie because it's extremely emotional and ends up telling you something about the human condition. Without Ellie, that's just, it's not even possible what they accomplished with this game. Number two, Nick Valentine from Fallout 4. Nick is a synthetic. That's what we got to get out of the way right away. He's not a real person, at least not a real human anyhow. He actually thinks he's some kind of prototype between the two generations of synths and also believes that's why he has his morality as opposed to simply an ingrained dislike of everybody who's not from the Institute. He's actually pretty well respected in Diamond City and even though he has a gray morality, I would say, he always leans towards good. He's a quirky individual and of course that's to be expected because he's not organic. He's kind of a not completely anything but that all comes together into a complete character type character. Oh and another thing he never stops with the wisecracks and all that in mind he will just destroy your heart if you get into conversation with him. This guy didn't experience life as I experienced it. He woke up one day and was alive. There's a great many people who don't view him as a sentient being but rather as an abomination. Nation. And although, like I said, he's well respected, he just doesn't have the same place in society that another person would. And that's sad. It makes you feel bad because he's really not a bad guy. He's actually a really good guy. And let's just sit down here and be completely honest. He's a robot detective that looks like Dick Tracy and that's cool as shit. Finally, number one, Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. Ultimately, probably the thing in the game that the most effort was spent on, Elizabeth is not only a well-rounded character with the most defined arc in the entire game. She's also, spoiler alert, seriously, stop listening if you haven't played the game and intend to, but she's your kid. You watch someone go from child to adult in the span of a very short period of time because they've been locked up in a tower their entire lives and the naivety just sort of melts away. She's also what kind of amounts to an abuse survivor. You know, at the hands of the songbird who's both simultaneously loving and rough with her and it's really hard not to sympathize with that and then you find out she's your kid and you're just kind of like, did I really help you by undoing all of this? Because it's not like you put her in a better situation, you just put her in kind of a different situation. And ultimately, she's such a likable and good character, a very fleshed out character that you can't help but care about. You just kind of feel bad, not just for her, but because of you. Booker is not exactly what you would say the best person ever. And most of the problems in Elizabeth's life actually stem from him, which all the more makes you want to do right by her. And in the end, all of these characters produce very strong feelings when you bring them up talking with somebody else who's played the game that you've played, and maybe not in the same way, but there's some kind of genuine affection for all of them that's really hard to avoid because they're all such well-made characters in one way or another. Have you ever fallen in love with a video game character? And I don't mean specifically romantic love, but platonic or familial? Just if you ever felt affection for a video game character, let us know in the comments. We'd like to have a discussion about that, actually. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please click like. It helps us a whole lot. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. Thanks again for watching this video, and we will see you next time right here on Game Rings.